Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Namaste and a very warm welcome to all of you to the Blub World Web Talks 218th episode. In the last 217 episodes, more than 3,000 school leaders have attended this platform and shared their ideas, opinions, innovations, and what all new are they doing in the education space. So, Namaskar, you are welcome to the Blub World Web Talks 218th episode. In the last 217th episode, there are more than 3,000 people in the school leaders have their ideas, their innovations, so they have been doing the new things with us. और वो हमने दुनिया भर के बहुत सारे स्कूल्स तक बहुत सारे बच्चों तक बहुत सारे पेरेंट्स तक पहुंचाया सो बिफोर वी स्टार्ट टुडे सेशन नमस्ते आई एम दक्ष एम द फाउंडर ऑफ लव वर्ल्ड मैगजीन मेंट फॉर टीनेजर्स बिलीविंग इन द वेरी सिंपल आइडिया ऑफ टीन्स इंस्पायरिंग टीन हमारे पास कहानियों की कमी हो गई है तो नई नई कहानियां हमें ढूंढने की जरूरत है बच्चों के लिए एंड स्पेसिफिकली फॉर टीनेजर्स क्योंकि जब हम टीन्स की बात करते हैं वो एक ऐसी उम्र है जहां पर कोई आपकी सुनना नहीं चाहता लेकिन वही ऐसी उम्र में जिसमें सबसे ज्यादा सुनना होता है क्योंकि उस एज की क्रिटिकलिटी ऐसी है वेयर देर इज अ ब्लेंड ऑफ रिवोल्ट रेवोल्यूशन एंड लॉट ऑफ न्यू थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग इन लाइफ तो लेट्स ट्राई टू नो फ्रॉम द अमेजिंग गेस्ट लाइन ऑफ दैट वी हैव विथ अस टुडे कि उनके पास क्या क्या स्ट्रेटेजीज हैं क्या क्या उन्होंने इस्तेमाल किया है क्या क्या नया इनोवेशन उन्होंने अपने इंस्टीट्यूशन में किया है वट ऑल न्यू हैव दे डन टू मेक टीन एजर्स मोर कॉन्फिडेंट एंड मोर रेजिलियंट ये दो शब्द जो है ये पैराडॉक्सिकल है इन दोनों में अपना एक बंद है बिकॉज वेन यू से कॉन्फिडेंस एंड वेन यू से रिजिलियंस दे बोथ टिपिकली ट्राई टू फाइट ईच अदर बहुत सारा कॉन्फिडेंस हो जाएगा तो रिजिलियंस कम हो जाएगी बहुत ज्यादा रिजिलियंस हो जाएगी तो कॉन्फिडेंस कम हो जाएगा तो हाउ डू स्कूल लीडर्स और दी एक्सप्रेस इन एजुकेशन डील विद टीन एजर्स एंड रेज दम एज मच मोर कॉन्फिडेंट एंड रिजिलियंट टीन एजर बिफोर वी स्टार्ट दिस सेशन जस्ट सम ग्राउंड रूल थिंक ऑफ द ब्लब वर्ल्ड वेबटॉक्स एज अ स्पीकिंग स्प्रिंट ये सौ मीटर की दौड़ है ज्यादा लंबी मैराथन नहीं है तो योर स्पीकिंग टाइम इज लिमिटेड तो वंस योर स्पीकिंग टाइम इज ओवर यू माइट गेट म्यूटेड इफ यू गेट म्यूटेड प्लीज डोंट गेट ऑफेंडेड आपको परेशान करने के लिए वो नहीं है लेकिन सबके लिए पूरा एक्सपीरियंस क्रिस्ट और एंटरटेनिंग रखने के लिए है तो प्लीज फुट द बेस्ट फुट फॉरवर्ड और द बेस्ट थॉट फॉरवर्ड थैंक यू सो मच वंस अगेन फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस सेकेंडली इट इज अ बाइलिंगल प्लेटफॉर्म आप अंग्रेजी या हिंदी में से कोई भी भाषा इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं कोशिश करें इन्हीं दो में से कोई एक इस्तेमाल करें कोई तीसरी इस्तेमाल करेंगे तो आई वोट गेट इट सो दीज टू स्मॉल लेटर रिक्वेस्ट टू यू बिफोर वी स्टार्ट दिस सेशन वंस अगेन अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू टू हंड्रेड एंड एटीन एपिसोड लेट्स लर्न फ्रॉम ऑल दी स्कूल लीडर्स ऑफ देयर स्ट्रेटेजीज देयर इनोवेशन देयर एक्सपेरिमेंटेशन ऑन हाउ शुड वी बी रेजिंग कॉन्फिडेंट एंड रेजिलियंट टीन एजर्स अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम एवरी वन लेट मी इन्वाइट द फर्स्ट स्पीकर फॉर टूडे for this round table a very warm welcome to ms archana nirola the vice principal for dcm group of schools from pirozpur punjab archana ma'am over to you for the next 3 minutes please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome thank you so much daksh for introducing me good evening all of you i'm privileged to be a speaker here and since we people are going to share the strategies on raising confident and resilient teens let me first of all ask each one of you because we all are parents teachers caregivers by and large when we deal with teens do we know our children that's the first question which comes to our mind what values have we instilled in them do we actually listen to them can they confide in us when they flop all these questions loom around when we people think about the teens so with all this let's now talk about the actionable top tips that will help the teens to develop the confidence that they can handle anything life throws their way and for that the first question obviously comes that is how how to help teenagers embrace that stress so my answer is the very first and the foremost step is we actually have to change our mindset first uh, you know stress is a very natural part of our life but it is healthy also to grow like you can say it's a positive challenge which we people need to teach our children like lifting weights to build muscle i hope you all agree with me and next is that we need to support the recovery recovery is very important some a uh, damage has happened how to recover out of that that is very important so we need to ensure that the team has time to recover between the periods of intense activity they go through the whole day it's our prime responsibility to tell them to have breaks in between enjoy and recharge and come back complete 
you know for that i believe that the perspective taking is very very important we need to show the bigger picture to our teens to understand that how the challenges can help them grow and learn i ask you all i request you all to look back in your journey where have you reached over the years here have you not failed have you not faced challenges how have we come out of that only after thinking it as a challenge so we people need to tell uh, our success stories to our children so that they have the positive outcome now since we all are the caregivers we are responsible to teach our children to find the balance you know encouraging teen to prioritize their well being and their interest outside the school it's very very important to tell them that they need to have small breaks in between so that they can perform academically well and we need to actually normalize seeking help it's a taboo we cannot ask for help how is it possible if we are not blessed with everything we are human beings by the end of the day so normalizing seeking help is extremely important it's actually a sign of strength not weakness so we need to tell them that they can trust their adults we people are their teachers parent coach counselors and yes the most important thing i believe is that we need to guide and avoid rescue parenting we cannot be the wall every time for our children thank you so much asma ma'am the first three minutes were over so whenever you see my hand in the air it means that the final 30 seconds are counting thank you so much i think some very important points that you added to the discussion first and most important let's compare the school to a gymnasium let's compare building confidence to building your muscle jaise hi gym mein aap jayenge when you do that you know weights तो बहुत सारा मसल ब्रेकेज होता है जिसके बाद में रिकवरी चाहिए तो उसी तरीके से टीनेजर्स जो अपना पूरा दिनचर्या जी रहे हैं उसके बाद में दे वुड नीड अ लॉट ऑफ रिकवरी गिव देम द टाइम टू रिलैक्स एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली जो आपने फाइनली क्या रेस्क्यू पेरेंटिंग मत कीजिए हर जगह पे उन्हें प्रोटेक्ट करने मत पहुंच जाइए कुछ कुछ चैलेंजेस उन्हें खुद लेने दीजिए लेट देम हैव दी ओनर्स थैंक यू सो मच अर्सा मैम लेट मी इन्वाइट द नेक्स्ट स्पीकर फॉर टूडे अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू मिस्टर भूपेंद्र सिंह राजावत द प्रिंसिपल from my uh, own school from jaipur rajasthan bhupender ji over to you for the next 3 minutes please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome uh, good evening daksh and good evening all the fellow principals vice principals see uh, children learn what they see around them so uh, we as parents or teachers or principals have to lead from the front so if our behavior is confident and resilient children will also become the same knowingly or unknowingly whether it is teens or for that matter any age knowingly or unknowingly people learn from what they see around them and we are our children's leaders so if we are we don't get frustrated or bogged down uh due to certain failures or due to certain things which do not happen as per our wishes and so children also learn that way so it is very important that we we uh, behave in a manner uh, which we want our children to instill so this is one secondly i i feel meditation plays a very important role if we can teach meditation to our teenagers uh, certain breathing exercises and which can be very well conducted uh, during school time even if schools do not have playground in the classroom itself in zero periods uh, we can make our children do some breathing exercises we can make them do meditation i think meditation gives calmness it improves our concentration uh everybody who uh does meditation becomes calm and composed and relaxed so when you when you are calm composed and relaxed you do not have any you do not have fear and uh, your concentration basically uh becomes great then so this is this is another and i think all the children uh or teenagers should do sports sports teaches how to cope up with failures right so because in sports it doesn't happen that every time you play you win even the best teams in the world or the best players in the world have lost many a time so it's important that we make our children do sports and children by nature love to do sports teenagers by nature love to do sports 
so we should we should encourage our teenagers to do sports this way also they will become very confident about themselves and they will learn how to cope with failures another thing which i feel is that uh, we need to give a lot of pep talk to our students from time to time i uh, i think we all do that but i think we should we should further enhance this pep talk in the morning assembly or otherwise helps uh, motivate children and uh, especially when they don't perform that well like if you, you give opportunity to some teenager in, in the morning assembly or at a school annual function and he or she does not perform well they already know that they have not performed well they they are all, already feeling very bad about it and now their confidence level is low so this is the time when we should tell the child or tell uh, the performers that no you did well it was quite good considering that it was your first first attempt you have done very very well i mean and it should not sound that we are just trying to you know uh, tell the child just to motivate uh, i mean we we should really tell the uh, right points so uh, because you know students uh, or teenagers sometimes they are not very confident when they face uh, a large audience so we 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 should we should give them confidence we should give them encouragement at such times thank you so much bhupender sir the first 3 minutes are over but i think some very good points keep giving them the pep talk let's uh, involve more of meditation and sports thoda physical activity kijiye thoda sa meditation jo hai wo aapko thoda bahut composed banayega it will bring you back to yourself introspect karna sikha dega and it will make the teenager more robust Uh, for his own future decision making thank you so much bhupender ji let me invite the next speaker for today a very warm welcome mrs mohita jain the principal from sr dayanand senior secondary public school from ambala haryana mohita ma'am over to you for the next 3 minutes please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome a uh, good evening everyone uh, here i would like to share some experiences when we sometimes go to the doctors they have a very bold writing is there the best gift you can give to your children is your time and the grooming doesn't start from the teenage it actually starts from the very beginning when your children are in your custody the way you groom them the way that is the way they will grow up earlier we used to have joint family system where we had our grandparents with the uh, children they used to tell them stories they not just stories they used to listen to them we they uh, our children they actually need patient listeners so that they can share their stories they can share their daily talk that is we people only if we listen to them we are able to understand what is their thought process then we are able to guide them better and recently i have come across many students especially uh, those who are in grade uh, 9 onwards from grade 9 to 12 those students suffer more of uh, discomforting type of problems aggression or they feel low only when they are not speaking to others some of them those who are over confident they are more pampered at home we people are providing them just everything that is one category and the second category is the students or the teenagers who are deprived not only at their homes but also at school and at other places as well first i'll talk of the students or teenagers whom we are deprived it's not that we are depriving them of uh, money we are sending them to good schools not just providing uh, food clothing and outings to them we are depriving them of the time we are not giving them enough time to listen at schools they are with their friends they are they are facing a lot of such situations where they may not be able to tackle on their own they face diversions some of them some students they might try to divert your teens to let's go for outing let's go for movies let's go for parties and there since they are being deprived of the time by their parent by their teacher so they will naturally divert to wrong side and this can lead to a very bad effect on their minds they will not become confident they will be confident only if they are having money in their pocket that i have 10 friends the moment 
that money is not in the pocket they lose their friends and the confidence level it dips down they feel rejected the second category of uh, students or teens is that who are being over pampered they are being provided with everything but not the time and i have come across such children who are facing this depression problem because they are not able to speak out they are not able to share at home they have nobody to listen to so they resort to certain medical problems as well so the best thing i feel that you need to give to your child is your time thank you so much mohita uh, ma'am yes uh, i think the most important uh, commodity the most important gift the most important element that you can add to a teenager's life is your time as a parent आप जब उन्हें मटीरियल थिंग्स से थोड़ा ऊपर उठा पाएंगे उनके थॉट प्रोसेस को दैट इज वेन यू बिल्ड दम एज इंडिविजुअल इफ मनी कम्स इन योर फ्रेंड्स कम इन एंड विथ मनी योर फ्रेंड्स गो अवे दैट्स अ बिग चैलेंज दैट यू माइट फेस थ्रू आउट योर लाइफ यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ डू रिलेशन इट्स अ बिग चैलेंज और अ बिग मेस दैट यू आर गेटिंग इन टू सो थैंक यू सो मच मोहिता मैम लेट मी नाइट द नेक्स्ट स्पीक ऑफ टूडे अ वेरी वॉर्म वेलकम टू मिसेज पल्लवी सुखंसकर द वाइस प्रिंसिपल फॉर प्रेस्टीज पब्लिक स्कूल फ्रॉम इंदौर मध्य प्रदेश Hello ma'am over to you for the next 3 minutes please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome thank you so much few things of course i agree with whatever has been said till now in this forum but i would like to add few more points first is i feel it is very important for us to teach our kids to recognize and name their feelings at times it happens that whether the child is angry or nervous or anxious the child is not able to recognize so it we have to start it from a very early age so first of all child should know that what the kind of feeling the child is having and then we a second step for that is once the child recognizes the feeling then the child can identify okay i'm feeling this so how can i cope up with this then second thing is we should foster supportive relationship the child can have good relationship with the adults mature people who are there nearby home or maybe in the school with the teachers maybe with their uncle aunts neighbors or anybody so we need to see if the child is feeling comfortable with some adult then we need to improve the we need to ensure that the relationship that we foster the relationship such relationships where the child feels comfortable and can take out her baby then we third very important thing for adults also i'll say that we should learn to ask for help we should understand that it is not necessary that we are able to solve all the problems on our own so kids should also understand that from whom the child can take help so we can talk to the children when any problems come and then we can think upon it we can analyze that how we could have done better next thing is never say you have done this you are responsible for this you have not done this always try to analyze the situation being with the child bring empathy in your uh, discussion whenever you talk to the children so when you use the word be child feels that belongingness with you then give chances to the child to practice their life skills right we teach lot many life skills to students but whenever we see the child is struggling with something we start just we immediately jump and we try to help the child this will definitely not make the child resilient or confident the failures we learn i basically feel that we learn lot more from our failures than our success so failures are something which teach you lot so please let them fail and then let them only come out of their failure you be there to guide be there to help but then let them practice their own life skills let them understand that stressful situations are a result so that they can cope up with stress and they can bring their resilience back we can give the example of covid we all have very bad time but even during lockdown we all have learned new skills we learned cooking we learned cleaning we learned gardening we learned photography we learned to keep ourselves safe that is something which is very important many of us made some ngos made some groups and tried to help the community so that is something i feel very important and the last line i would say if a child is confident resilience will automatically come to it thank you so much thank you so much pallavi ma'am if the child is confident resilience would come on its own way i think this is something that we need to delve into deeper more asking for help ki hum hamesha taiyar rahenge koi baat nahi if there is a challenge let's ask for help let's not bring our pride in between or our ego in between 
कहीं ना कहीं एज ह्यूम अपने आप को रिकोगनाइज करना थोड़ा बहुत इंट्रोस्पेक्ट करना दैट वुड ब्रिंग टू अ प्लेस वेर योर कॉन्फिडेंस विल इंक्रीज which in turn will increase the resilience thank you so much pallavi ma'am let me invite the next speaker for today a very warm welcome to mr rajneesh madan the principal from desh bhagat global school mandi govindgarh punjab rajneesh ji over to you for the next 3 minutes please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome good evening everyone today i would like to discuss some policies for raising confidence and resilient teens teenagers are at the crucial stage in their life where they are experiencing significant changes in their physical emotional and social development this can often result in uh, changes uh, in the feelings of uncertainty we can say and insecurity and anxiety as parents guardians and caregivers it is our accountability it is our responsibility to support and guide them through this challenging time so what can we do to help our teens become confident and resilient the first step is build a positive relationship with your teen the foundation of raising confident and resilient teens is establishing a positive relationship with them spend time with them listen to them show interest in their lives when they feel valued and understood and they are more likely to trust and confide in you second step is your encourage independence as your teen grows it is important to encourage them to become more independent give them responsibilities and allow them to make decisions and when they learn to make choices and take responsibilities for their actions they develop a sense of autonomy and confidence third is their foster a growth mindset encourage your team you have a growth mindset by emphasizing or focusing the value of learning from mistakes and failures teach them that setbacks are a part of life and that they can learn from them to improve their future outcomes promote a healthy lifestyle a healthy lifestyle is crucial for both physical and mental well-being encourage your team to eat a balanced diet get enough sleep and engage in regular physical activity this will not help them for better physically but it can also improve their mental health and resilience set realistic goals next step is encourage your team to set realistic goals and help them to develop a plan to achieve them celebrate their successes along the way and provide support when they face obstacles the last is foster a sense of community and encourage your team to be involved in their community by joining clubs voluntary or participating in sport teams sports teams this can help them develop a sense of belonging and purpose which can improve their resilience and confidence in conclusion raising confidence and resilience teams requires of building a positive relationship encouraging independence fostering a growth mindset promoting a healthy lifestyle setting realistic goals and fostering a sense of community these policies can help our teens navigate the challenge of adolescence and emerge as a confident and resilient individuals i think so thank you so much for listening to me thank you thanks a lot thank you so much rajesh is one important point that you added to the discussion that can be taken ahead is that giving them and making them an understanding of the importance of community and getting involved in community work because this is where you typically build those relationships build those neural networks which create that kind of confidence that are required in individuals you created a very good list of things that can be done one after the other but i think community and the importance of community engagement is something that must be taken ahead in the discussion thank you so much rajneesh ji let me invite the next speaker for today a very warm welcome to mrs rekha nimkar the principal of maharshi center for educational excellence from bhopal madhya pradesh rekha ma'am over to you for the next 3 minutes please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome good evening everyone my co speakers have already said so many things but still i have something to share with all of you it's well quoted by elizabeth colbert the exhausting cycle of constantly monitoring their work and performance makes children feel less competent and confident so how do we hit that sweet spot of giving appropriate support and protection on the one hand and enough independence to foster confidence and competence on the other so few strategies which i have noted down the first one is stop controlling and start coaching so your job as a parent to is to support your child so they can flourish and grow doing things for them robs them of the opportunity to become competent doing things with them teaches them how to do things and build confidence this means we have to manage our own anxiety and let go of our need to control it second remember that perfection is not the goal 
resist the temptation to improve on your child's task unless the outcome is vitally important. Let them try to do it themselves from the earliest age. Train them to recognize mistakes instead of correcting them and shielding them from making the mistake. Experiencing the feeling of failure and knowing how to get back up afterward is a very important life skill. You can make sure you are present to provide emotional support and encouragement, but let your little one figure out a solution by himself without you stepping in. Focus on effort and not results. Your goal for them is to keep trying, practicing, improving, and for them to learn that whenever they work hard, they can accomplish their goals. Next is promote self-improvement. There is a healthy balance between self-acceptance and self-improvement. Show your team that it's possible to accept flaws while also striving to become better. To promote self-improvement in your team, help them identify their strengths as well as their weaknesses. Next one, praise effort instead of outcome. Your team can control their efforts, but they can't always control the outcome. It's important to acknowledge their energy and efforts so they don't think they are only worthy of praise when they succeed. Show them that it's important to try hard and it's okay if they don't succeed all the time. Next one is teach assertiveness skills. To teach your team to be assertive, begin by talking about the difference between being assertive and being aggressive. Let them know that being assertive means standing up for themselves using a strong and confident voice without being rude or yelling at other people. Other ways to impart assertiveness skills include allowing them to make choices and reinforcing that they have rights, especially the right to say no to anything that makes them uncomfortable. Model confidence. Your team will learn the most about confidence based on what you do not what you say. Role model how to face new situations with courage and confidence and demonstrate the importance of loving yourself. Thank you, Rekha, ma'am. The first three minutes over, over, but some very important points that you've listed out. I think the most important or the most critical one that must be taken ahead, that's from controlling move to coaching. At every place, don't monitor them. Don't make them do an examination of everything in life and don't give them a metric. Okay, this is where you stand. Giving them a performance appraisal again and again typically ruins their confidence and their outlook towards life. They think of everything as something that until unless I achieve this, I won't be appreciated and we won't be building confident teams if we do this. If we keep doing this, we'll be building overthinking teams and overthinking individuals who would always be striving for perfection, which never happens. So thank you so much, ma'am. Let me invite the next speaker for today. A very warm welcome to Dr. Rupa Rani Tyagi, the principal of Eklavya Public School from Murad Nagar, Uttar Pradesh. Rupa, ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome. Thanks, sir. Thanks for invitation. And uh, I have already listened a lot from the seniors, I should say, who have spoken here. But even then, I have something to say. First, the confidence which comes from the uh, inner side. And uh, when we talk about the strength, Strength is one of the reasons for your confidence. So strength, that may be your physical as well as your mental strength. So once you want to develop a child in a confident and a resilient one, you need to make him uh, healthy mentally, as physically as well as mentally. Uh, the second thing, we should make our child learn from the childhood that uh, how to digest the failures. Like if you get failures in your life, that is not the end of the life. And that is not end of the... Uh, process it's a process once you get filled you need to try it again and then you will get more than before next thing uh, we need to celebrate the uh, progress of our child we should not only go for the results or we should not go only for the success if our child has got success in something then we are celebrating it but we are not celebrating day by day the child is learning something so we need to pay attention on that. What was our child doing before and what he is doing now? He has a step up from the first level to second level. So we should uh, try to celebrate as a school as well as a parent. We need to celebrate the progress, not only the success. Then comes the parent's timing as before, as already discussed. The confidence which is losing nowadays uh, in students and in uh, in teenagers, specifically they're not connecting with the family, they're not connect connecting with the society. So cultivating social connections 
is more important than avoiding the social isolations. Even in living in such a society where we have so many people around us, but we are isolated. So this feeling of isolation, we should overcome and we should uh, think and we should give such an environment to our child that he or she must feel to discuss and must feel to uh, deliberate whatever he is having in his mind. Then uh, uh, how you can make confident the child uh, there may be so many factors why a child is not confident or why a child is not resilient. There may be so many problems uh, behind. There may be so many reasons. So one of the reasons is the child is not learning anything or the child is uh, uh, having some problem. We are not paying much attention. I have found one of the child uh, three days back. Uh, I was uh, told by the teacher. I'm just sharing this story because these things recently happened. The child, he took admission last year in our school in class fifth. And in class sixth, he's not doing well. And uh, he has having uh, another, his work is complete, his writing is not well, and he is very shy and he is very much, uh, you know, if you uh, uh, speak to him, he's not able to speak. So the teachers, they send me like the teachers used to do, principal ke paas bhez do, bhai ye nahi kar kuch bhi. And the child came, I, as soon as I saw his face, I felt that there is some problem. There may not be, everyone is, can't be notorious. So I talked him, what is, the, what is the problem? You just read out the sentence, he was not able to read the sentence. I asked you in class six and not able to read the sentence. But later on, we come to know the problem that the child was not able to see. And the class teacher was also not able to find out. So the child, uh, same day, I talked to his parents and then uh, he met with the doctor and everything that was. Uh, so sometimes there may be different kind of problems and avoid comparison and test comparison and teasing. It is the habit of the teachers as well as the parents that tease the students. You are not doing this. You are not doing that. You can't do anything. And even the, not only the teenagers, even the adult people, they are also facing this problem. So everybody should have a kind of confidence and we need to develop that confidence in our child that you can do everything, whether you are failing or you are passing now, but you will definitely do something. Thank you so much, Rupa, I think a nice, <clears throat> good anecdote you also quoted. Uh, when we typically want our teenagers or children to have that confidence, you will have to take them through the journey of decision and the onus of the impact of those decisions. Until and unless they don't live the complete journey of their own decisions, they don't get confident, they don't get resilient. Thank you so much, ma'am. Let me invite the next speaker for today. A very warm welcome, Mrs. Soma Singh, the head of school for DPSG International School from Ghaziabad, Uttar Pradesh. Soma, ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome. Thank you, Mr. Daksh. Good evening, everyone. Um, I've been listening to my worthy uh, co-panelists and uh, there's a lot of learning that I've made through this discussion. Um, see, the teenage times have always been turbulent in one's life, but these days the teens face immense pressures. Uh, when we were young, <clears throat> we had the freedom to play with our friends. We had cousins in summer vacations, we would meet the family and we had connections. Unfortunately, the nuclear family structures, the small families, the societies where the neighbors don't interact. Earlier at our time, all the entire mohalla used to be our siblings and our friends. So that was the escape. Now the teens are the center of a universe, center of universe for the parents, for teachers, for the entire community. So, and not only that, they are the focus of the market also. So they don't only they don't only have pressures from parents, their expectations, they're expected to, uh, they're actually distracted by so many factors, and there's no space and scope for the teens to be what they are. And everyone, every uh, living being needs a space to blossom. So one, that we've got to accept them the way they are. You've got to give them the space to be. And this needs a structured program. When we talk randomly about that we must do this with teens, we must give them time, this and th that. But at the same time, we have to have a structured program to build resilience among teens. So at DPSG International, we have incorporated and integrated in our regular curriculum, the C learning curriculum. And we begin right at grade one level. C learning stands for social, ethical, and emotional learning. 
and the curriculum brings in opportunities to the children to reflect upon every every activity that they do and every uh, interaction that they have and it really brings them that awareness as to what puts them out of the balance zone and when is it that they get in the hyper level or the low activity level when they get withdrawn and when they get hyperactive so all those aspects slowly and gradually get built up where children become aware of their own emotions their own responses and they begin reflecting so that's one thing that aids we have a well structured meditation program also wherein the children are given those 20 minutes wherein they sit in silence there are some podcasts that play and they connect with themselves. So that has been able to bring good results our way. Uh, now what happens, another thing that I must say is that it's okay like our physical body ails at times. It's okay that our minds, that we have mental illnesses and we need help. So sometimes it's important and parents and schools must accept that sometimes it's important to take help from professionals. So I would like to add here that we must believe that teens are in need of space, in need of a structured program, in need of help from experts whenever required. Thank you one and all for patient listening. Thank you so much, Tuvam. And I think uh, you very well established the importance of a structure to whatever program that you're putting in place in the school, whether it's meditation, whether it's sports, whether it's confidence building, whether it's resilience. The structure of deliverance is very, very important and very, very critical. It has to be consistent. It has to be something that keeps going on. There's a feedback mechanism and there's a complete structure around it. Thank you so much, ma'am. Let me invite the next speaker for today. A very warm welcome to Mrs. Srilatha Maniam, the principal for Raja Desing Public School from Villupuram, Tamil Nadu. Srilatha, ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome. Happy evening to all the educators. I'm highly privileged and honored to be a part of this wonderful forum. So um, right from the beginning, we should give the confidence and insist uh, uh, the confidence is the belief that you will be successful to the children. So that confidence we have to give and then uh, motivating them to be very practical. So they have to be the uh, be very practical and uh, right from childhood we have to give them a lot of opportunities to try new things. So this confidence will raise their self-esteem. So what is the power of self-esteem they have to realize that is making themselves feel good. First of all, they should not go down so making them realize that uh, they are worthful, worthful person for the family as well as for the society. So this uh, will create great resilience in them. And we have to understand the background of the child. We should uh, uh, give them handholding in uh, difficult situations and motivate them and make them bounce back uh, to the normal when they are uh, uh, demotivated. And also we can uh, motivate them uh, in hard and um, stressful situation by uh, being with them, uh, motivating them. As uh, other speakers told that family time is more important as they are lacking now with the mobiles. They are into their own world. So they have to come out from that and they have to uh, bring in. And uh, we have to insist on self-compassion, I feel. So which is being kind to themselves. They have to be kind. Sometimes they are arrogant. Why, why I am like that and are their feelings? Uh, so, uh, self-compassion we have to, and uh, when these things uh, don't work out, uh, we have to give them hope. As Ma'am said, uh, like uh, this two years in this corona, children, uh, they lost their, uh, 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 what to tell, uh, study skills. So they are dejected when they're not, they're, they're studying, but they're not, they're working hard, they're putting their efforts, but they're not confident. So we have to give them hope. Whatever you are planned, you will be successful. So we have to give them such hope and motivate them and focus them on the things that they can control. So uh, we have to work on the growth mindset, uh, growth mindset of the child. And also we have to motivate them practicing the self-affirmations. So uh, how uh, uh, they can improve themselves. And also uh, uh, we have to acknowledge the personal strength as Nam is telling uh, we have to celebrate their uh, success, small, small success. Uh, we have to motivate them and uh, the talents and remind them that 
uh, they have to be self realistic and they have to set their own goals and surely whatever goals they are uh, they are having they will be achieving it and they should be passionate about their goals so create the passionate uh, in them so and also we have to tell the focus on the thing that they can have the control so once uh, if they feel that they are more confident and relaxed they can do wonders so uh, trust uh, uh, we have to give them uh, uh, trust on them and finally i want to say that we have to create the five qualities in them that is perseverance of a crow concentration of a crane alertness of a dog and the consumption of adequate nourishment and willingness to sacrifice comfort so these five things right from the childhood so at any situation even though the, now they are very posh ac uh, whatever parents are asking they are giving as they are ching, single child but when these five qualities is we are this perseverance concentration alertness adequate nourishment willingness to comfort we are giving surely they will excel in their life and uh, we are there to support them we are understanding them. we have to understand parents have to understand motivate and always be supportive to them thank you so much shila sir ma'am and yes uh, there's a hindi muhavara i think kak chestha rakho dhyanam which you typically brought to the conversation uh, that there are certain qualities that you have to develop in them make them resilient to make them confident in their life thank you so much shila sir ma'am let me invite the next speaker for today very warm welcome to mrs yashika bhagwad the director for bharat ram global school from noida uttar pradesh Yashika, ma'am, over to you for the next three minutes. Please unmute yourself and a very warm welcome. Thank you so much, Daksha. A very warm good evening to everybody present here. I've heard some wonderful thoughts coming from the eminent panelists who have been over here, and I think I'm going to make the best use of my three minutes that you have given me. Uh, right at the outset, I must say, wonderful ideas that have come about, but the teenage years are something that I would choose to divide among in two. one is your early teenage years which is from grade 6 to 8 and the second part i would say is from grade 9 to 12 which is your latter teenage years but the focus in both of these is more or less same number one thrust being that we need to have a sense of identity and of citizenship that we can develop amongst our children and the idea of the self moves into the idea of being a responsible citizen i've always told my children in the classroom to be like the thumb like if you ask somebody how many fingers do you have in your hand they always say five and the answer is no there are four fingers but there's a thumb and the rule is or what i motivate them to do is that you need to be like the thumb you're a part of the hand and yet you're a part from the hand so you're a part of the crowd but you're a part from the crowd which means that you need to identify what your own true self is and every single success right at the age of a child when he is about 12 or 13 or 14 years old is that you need to compete with yourself when we point a finger at somebody saying that i can do better than you there are three fingers pointing towards us and a child needs to know that if in a particular not just a test but any task if the child has achieved the next level and the next level or the next time the child attempts it or is tested and gets even if a mark or two better than before it is a success because your success is what you stand for with yourself in a classroom environment we have plenty of opportunities where we can nurture leadership qualities and abilities the idea for team work we which are all 21st century skills because at this stage of early teenage ship the child is actually now looking for role models outside the family and the friends start to play a far more important role than before so if in your classroom teaching you can incorporate more group learning or group tasks or project based learning where the children need to put and synchronize their efforts together you will find that a lot of success as far as teenage development is concerned will come your way in the classroom itself here is when the public image starts to gain importance and when we point out in fact a lot of principals over here i would say that the teachers of grade 6 to 12 it is imperative that you do conduct a workshop for your teachers to completely understand the nuances of abuse and abuse doesn't just mean sexual abuse it's physical it's emotional even when you point out to a child that you are unable to do this you must understand that it is a form of verbal abuse because you are deriding a child when we move to grade 9 and 
I feel there's a complete dichotomy of values that we are uh, dealing with in with our teenagers. The child is at the centroid of a triangle, I feel, where you've got the home and the school working in tandem to produce a citizen for the community. And if we feel that the home can be independently working and we in school can be independently working to develop our children, that's a big no-no. We are both the parents and the school riding a tandem bicycle where our goal is the same. And if either one of us is to disconnect, we're not going to succeed. So our value system should be such that we practice. I see that my hand is up for the last 20 seconds. And I will say that in any Indian home, the kind of TVs that the shows that we are watching or the movies that we go to, we delve in a realm of make-believe where girlfriends and boyfriends are celebrated. But when we come back home, that's exactly what we tell our children not to do. So what is a teenager supposed to do? The CBSC has a fantastic helpline and I've been privileged to be a part of it. And you'll find that the teenagers need help and we are the ones who can give it to them. Thank you. Thank you so much, Yashika. I think a very important example that you gave, which is a very good conclusion to the talk, that let's try to make teenagers like our thumb, that you're part of the hand, but you're apart from the hand. So you must, I think it also coincides with Indian mythology that whenever you make the mudra in yoga, in Bharatnatyam, in whichever uh, you know form of expression in Indian mythology, it's always the mudra which is important. And whenever you touch your thumb to the finger, that's when the circuit gets completed. When it's health, when it's gastroenterology, when it's energy, and when it's even your buddhi. So these fingers denote that and your thumb typically adds the energy to it. So it's a good, very good example that we can all quote in the schools that let's try to become something like your thumb. Become the thumb rule, become the thumb, be unique, but still be a part of the community. Understanding that balance is what will build their perfect or pristine public image. I think that's the most critical element that must have been brought to the discussion. And thank you, ma'am, for bringing it. It is very important to understand because that, teen that is the point that teenager builds a public perception of himself in his mind. And that is where revolt really starts. This is the thing, this is that very critical small little nuance that happens in teenage where his complete behavior towards everyone completely changes. So you must have a deeper understanding of this. That the teenager must understand that how are things changing around him and how does he become part of the whole calculation. So before the session comes to an end, while we want to build confidence, while we want to develop resilience, we at Blub World thought of a very simple idea to do it. When we talk to teenagers, when we talk to children, they don't want to listen to us because for them, we are not relevant. We have lost context. So we said, how do adults add context to a discussion when it's with teenagers? The only way was to bring in stories from teens that can inspire other teens. So that's what we do every single month. We try to find out teenagers who are doing, doing amazingly well in life and share their stories with many more teens. This is a very good way of building their benchmark, their public image, their confidence and their perception about themselves. Around two years back, we initiated the world's first and the only elected parliament of teenagers in partnership with UNESCO and Save the Children, which is the World Teen Parliament, where every year, 100 teens get elected to the World Teen Parliament, work with us for one whole year to improve the world. In this process, they learn about democracy, they learn about problem solving, they learn about a lot of things that nobody talks about. I'm not telling this to you that you are a part of the World Teen Parliament. I'm telling this to you, replicate everything around you, replicate ideas. Ideas are no one's property. Idea is 100% democratic. Keep doing a lot of stuff. Keep involving teenagers. Keep talking to them. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of the Blub World Web Talk. This was the 218th episode. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed, and if you want to attend the future sessions, you can open your audio. Say a big yes, and thank you so much, and have an amazing evening.